We're here at REIT Week 2010 in Chicago, and I'm joined by Dean Frankel, Senior Portfolio Manager with Erdang Securities. Looking at the commercial real estate market in the United States, what are some of the big reasons for optimism right now? Well, I think the biggest reason for optimism is the lack of supply. And given some of the, dip, in some of the different sectors, it takes six months to 24 months to build a supply pipeline. I think that's a big positive. Uh, I mean, obviously, with, with the lack of demand and with high vacancies right now, those are the negatives that go along with that. But lack of supply and the fact that fundamentals have bottomed. And uh, also, one of the big surprises I think that's happened in the past, call it you know, three months, that's new information, is that fundamentals have really turned the corner. Uh, so in apartments, we've seen rents go up significantly over the past 90 days. It was expected maybe three to six months from now you'd start to see rents rise. So much faster. And also hotels has been another source, too. So they've also moved up quickly. And how about causes for concern? Well, I think it's the, the macro issues out there uh, that affect job growth. You know, if you take a look at suburban office, for example, it's going to be a tough slug out there right now. There's, there's you know, no demand whatsoever. Uh, there's low utilization of space. And we're going to need a lot of jobs to come back. What, we lost 7.5 million jobs over the past couple of years. We're going to need a lot of jobs to come back before people are even utilizing their full space right now, let alone need additional space. And then looking at the overall market, are there any sectors in particular that you're particularly high on at the moment? There's, there's, low, vacancies, there's low vacancy in the country right now. In addition, there's no supply out there, and the housing market's weak and should be weak for some time. So apartments are probably the favorite sector. I think storage has similar things going for it where there's no supply in it as well. And I think given the, given the uh, consumer optimism that's going on right now, I think that storage will continue to do well. Uh, we like hotels too. Uh, there is some risk right now, obviously, what's going on in Greece and in Europe. There's concerns, but uh, we think repertoire is going to be strong over the next few years and in huge recovery. And going around in your discussions with management teams, what seems to be the number one pressing issue or the question that you want answered the most? Well, when we meet with management teams, we are always focused on strategy. We're not focused on what your rev bar is going to be next week or what your NOI is going to be next quarter. We need to look out further and be a little bit longer term at thinking uh, in our strategy. So what we're looking for is stuff like, what is your target of leverage? Because these things change from time to time. People get excited about what's going on in the environment and they start chasing things. The next thing that they raise leverage or maybe they have too low leverage. You want to understand what management teams might do over the coming few years, and that'll help shape your ideas of what stocks are going to outperform and underperform. So we're asking questions, in addition to leverage, if they're going to do, be acquisitive or external growth, what might they do? What might they go after? What might they be looking for to add to their portfolio? What are, how do they view their cost of capital? Things like that. Uh, the last thing you want is someone you know, buying acquisitions and issuing dilutive equity and that maybe don't add to the bottom line. Well, if a company tells you, well, we're looking for acquisitions to add to FFO, we don't care about NAV, you need to understand that going into it, because you may be concerned about NAV dilution. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Dean. You're welcome.